Hello everyone and welcome to Florida Atlantic University's Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. In today's presentation you will be learning how to become a participant in the land-based dolphin spotter citizen science project by hosting a spotting station. Let's get started. Located in Fort Pierce, Florida, FAU Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute has been a leader in marine science since 1971. Today, over 300 ocean scientists, educators, staff, and students continue to work toward the goal of ocean science for a better world. Marine mammal research and conservation is an important part of what we do here at FAU Harbor Branch. Researchers are studying various species from pole to pole, such as manatees, dolphins, beluga whales, and more. Dolphins are marine mammals, meaning they breathe air, have hair, give life birth, and nurse their young. They live for over 40 years and on average weigh almost 700 pounds. Bottlenose dolphins are recognized as sentinels of ecosystem health because of their higher position within trophic levels and long lifespans. They are even known to eat some of the same fish that we eat. Understanding these relationships and habitat use is paramount to understanding the role of these important mammals within an estuary and system. FAU Harbor Branch has been studying the Indian River Lagoon dolphin population for three decades, and the Marine Mammal Stranding and Population Assessment Team is conducting a comprehensive photo identification study of the dolphin population in the Indian River Lagoon and Atlantic Ocean. Just like humans can be identified based on their unique fingerprints, our photo ID team can catalog dolphins by the scars, nicks, and notches on their dorsal fin. These patterns can be caused by both natural events, like shark encounters or aging, and human impacts, like boat strikes or entanglements. This makes every dorsal fin unique, so the photos we take can be used for identification and tracking over time. Once identified, each dolphin is given a four-lettered code or nickname. The population assessment team conducts monthly boat-based photo ID surveys using a high-powered camera to document bottlenose dolphins along designated transects of the Indian River Lagoon. Using methods like photo identification during line transect surveys and opportunistic effort, the team can gather valuable information about dolphin health, life history by observing mother and calf relationships, occurrences of human interactions like entanglements and boat strikes, even how harmful algal blooms affect dolphins in the lagoon and Atlantic Ocean, as well as accumulating baseline data. Photographing every dolphin in every part of the lagoon isn't possible or realistic. There simply is just not enough time or manpower for our team to document each individual dolphin. You can become a citizen scientist. A citizen scientist is anyone in the general public that collects information and or data to help with scientific research. Dolphin Spotter was launched in January of 2022 as a means to educate and engage citizen scientists and contribute to research being done by our Marine Mammal Stranding and Population Assessment Team. As a spotter, anyone can submit land-based images from locations like inlets, beaches, waterfront parks, behind private residences, marinas, and more. As we receive sightings, the interactive map on the website is updated, and so far we have over 160 sightings from Mare Island to Stewart, and even as far west as St. Petersburg. You can help to fill in those gaps by becoming a dolphin spotter today. Dolphin spotter submissions have documented dolphins in various location types, such as waterfront parks, canals behind private residences, marinas, and inlets. Spotters have observed several behaviors, like traveling and probable feeding, and are helping gain insights into life history by submitting images of mother and calf pairs. Citizen scientists have even documented human interaction, like previous entanglement wounds. Images of known individuals will help provide information of home ranges, like this dolphin that was spotted at the same location multiple times within a five-day time frame. Our photo ID team has been able to match several dolphins to their database, including Summer, which was a dolphin that became tidally stranded in 2021 and was rescued by our team. Milky Way was seen with evidence of lobal mycosis, known as a fungal infection that can be seen on the skin. Now, Spoiler and Chopper are two dolphins that have each been sighted more than once by different dolphin spotters. The newest way you can participate in this program is by hosting a spotting station. A spotting station is a trail camera that takes motion-activated images of dolphins as they swim past and is a great way to monitor specific areas of the lagoon 24-7. Some of the goals of dolphin spotter spotting stations are to help fill in the gaps along coastlines and shallow areas where the boat-based surveys do not reach, 
and to educate the public about the wild dolphin population in Florida. The public can help by installing trail cameras along their waterfront property to capture images of dolphins day and night. Now that you are familiar with the project, I'm going to walk you step by step on how you can host a spotting station. First, you must follow all the steps outlined in the instruction manual that can be found on the Dolphin Spotter webpage. The instruction manual will provide background information on the program, a shopping list of all the items you will need to purchase, a tutorial video link so you can follow along to set up your camera, a link to register your spotting station, guidelines on how to submit those images, and other important information that you need to know about the program. In the first section of the instruction manual, you will find a list of items needed to set up your spotting station. Once you have all the materials, you can move on to the second section of the manual to set up the spotting station along your waterfront location. In the instruction manual, you will find a link to a tutorial video that will walk you through a step-by-step -step process of setting up the menu on your camera and installing the spotting station. Click on the link in the manual to watch the video and follow along to set up your trail camera to start spotting dolphins. Once your trail camera is fully installed and set up, the next step in the instruction manual is to register your spotting station. Click on the link in the manual and fill out the registration form. Once you have finished watching this video, you will need to provide personal information about you, the host of the spotting station. The third section of the form will ask that you attest and acknowledge that you agree to follow all rules and regulations outlined in the form. Don't forget to submit a photo of your fully installed spotting station. Once you have filled out the attestations and provided your information, registration is complete. You will receive an email that contains information on the Watch Spotter app that is used for submissions. You will also need the project code for the app to access the Dolphin Spotter portal, which is included in this email. You may want to save this email so you can refer to the project code, in case you forget it. Once your trail camera has been capturing images for at least a week, it is time to download the photos and see if your camera caught any dolphins. Refer to the instruction manual on how to download your trail camera images and submit them through the Watch Spotter app or the web-based portal. Remember to be patient. Most of your images may end up being waves or other wildlife passing by your camera. Those dolphin images are definitely worth the wait, so be persistent. After you have sorted through your photos, you are ready to start submitting dolphin sightings. Once you have downloaded the WatchSpotter app and have entered the project ID, this is what the home screen on the app will look like. Before you can add a new spot, you must log into the app or create an account. Click Sign In slash Register and fill out the designated boxes. The display name is your username that will be visible on your submitted spots. If you do not want to use your mobile device, or it is easier for you to use your computer, you can log in to the online Watch Spotter portal to submit your sightings. Click Sign In slash Register and fill out the designated boxes. Once again, the display name is your username that will be visible on your submitted spots. You can also visit the Dolphin Spotter webpage and log into the map that is at the bottom of the page. To learn more about how to use the app, as well as helpful tips and tricks to adding a sighting, check out the Quick Reference Guide on the Watch Spotter website. At the bottom of the home page, click Quick Reference Guide Mobile App. On the Quick Reference Guide page, you will find information about the app, as well as a short video showing users how to navigate through the app itself. Once you have logged into the app and entered the project code, click on the three horizontal bars in the top right corner of the app. The field guide, which is located here, has a lot of helpful resources and links for spotters to use. For example, users can find the FWC Wildlife Alert Hotline in case they encounter an injured, sick, or stranded marine animal. Contact information and other opportunities are listed under the field guide as well, so be sure to check it out. Let's walk through what kind of information we want you to input into the form. It is important to note that you will need to submit a new sighting if your camera observes dolphins on multiple days, or the time between two separate observations is longer than one hour. Keep in mind the questions that have an asterisk are required for submission. First, you will select the category of the submission, which is spotting stations. Next, you will need to select the spot type, which will be installed spotting station. Under Location, select the city your spotting station is registered under, and then select the corresponding station under Fixed Location. Next, you will need to know the sighting date and time. 
The app will automatically have the current date and time populated as well as your current latitude and longitude. Your camera will have the date and time information saved in the photo, so you can enter those values. The fixed location option will automatically populate the saved coordinates from when you registered your spotting station. This is an example of how your trail camera images will look like. You can easily find the date and time on the bottom of the image. The next step is to confirm that you have registered your spotting station. If not, you will need to register before moving on. Feel free to add any additional comments, like if you happen to observe these dolphins at the time the images were taken, and notice behaviors like feeding or social behavior. Finally, choose how you would like to receive credit. This brings us to step three of the form, which is where you'll submit photos. You can upload up to three high quality photos with the maximum file size being three megabytes. After uploading your pictures of dolphins, press submit to complete your sighting. All of the images that we receive are shared with the FAU Harbor Branch photo identification team, who will cross-reference them with their dolphin database to see if the dolphin pictured matches one of their known individuals. As matches are confirmed, the sighting is updated to include the dolphin's name. You can find this information under the Spot Details section on your map. In addition, users can click on any point on the map to view all of the details from a particular sighting, even those submitted by other dolphin spotters. This is a great way to find out where local dolphins are being sighted, especially if you're not sure where to look or want to try out a new spotting location outside of using your spotting stations. To take a closer look at these trends, spotters can click the three bars on the upper right and select Recent Spot to see our latest sightings. This can be helpful since dolphins travel quite a bit throughout the day or during different seasons. We look forward to seeing your submissions and encourage everyone to report sightings as often as you would like. This project was supported by the Protect Wild Dolphins Florida Specialty License Plate, which is administered by the Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute Foundation. You can support dolphin research and education programs by purchasing a plate online or from your local tax collector's office. Thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial video about our Dolphin Spotter Citizen Science Project. For more information on this project, as well as ways that you can support research and education at FAU Harbor Branch, please visit our website at www.fau.edu hboi. Thank you for your participation, and happy dolphin spotting!